afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. This is Lee on Game of Tongues. And we're, we're very fortunate in this session to have with us Josh Zello from Texas. Uh, I want to say that Josh was the, the first reader to email me from my book and the first one to Skype with me um, and, and ask for help. And that was in mid-2016. Hmm. Josh explained that he was then 23 years old and taught Bible to hundreds of children and was studying to become a minister. However, he stuttered under pressure on most words and was, and this was threatening uh, his potential career. He explained that the book had helped him a lot, but that he still had bad days when he stuttered on most words. So we worked together on Skype weekly for, for, some, uh, for several months, attacking the problem until he was able to stop stuttering. When I formed Speech Anxiety Anonymous in the spring of 2017, Josh was good enough to join me and a handful of others in forming that organization, who had, people who had also uh, stopped stuttering by using my methods. And the purpose of Speech Anxiety Anonymous is it's much like Alcoholics Anonymous, which wherein people who control their alcoholism help others learn to control their alcoholism. We are people who control our speech and who speak, who do not have the appearance of a speech disability, and we help other people uh, try and achieve that, and we're having an incredible success uh, in doing that, I'm pleased to say. Um, as back to Josh, public speaking is Josh's business, and he routinely gives lectures on stage while being videoed, and no one views him as a stutterer. So it has now been uh, something on the order of 18 months since Josh stopped stuttering, and during this period, he he um, he has he was married. He, he's now 24, and uh, he he hope, he expects to soon be a minister, and he's just beginning what promises to be a wonderful stutter-free life. So with that background, I'm going to ask Josh to tell us if he would um, to, to share with us some of his experiences as a stutterer and then and then tell us um, what he did to stop stuttering mm -hmm. and finally to tell us what he does now to keep from having a relapse so with that background josh would you just tell us whatever you can share with us on this absolutely so um my stuttering started at about age three um, and it was very very bad um, from three onward i would stutter on bad days, every word, when I was in my um, really young years, three, four, and five, I probably did stutter every single word. Um, I was um, held back from going into kindergarten partially because of my speech. My stutter was so bad that I wasn't ready for kindergarten because I couldn't get through sentences. Um, for years, I didn't really see it. So everybody else, of course, knew that I... I stuttered and they heard it, but I would just truck along and get through sentences, even if that sentence took me 20 minutes to get through one sentence with everybody not understanding a lick of what I'm saying. But I would just truck along through it. And it got harder as I got older and I was in middle school and then high school and still stuttering really, really badly. And it would be hard to to order food. I remember telling you a story when we when we first started about ordering coffee drinks and I would change my mind on what coffee drink I would end up ordering because I would be like, you know, I'm not gonna say white chocolate peppermint mocha. <laughs> <laughs> so you ordered what you didn't want in order to avoid stuttering. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I would just get to the front and be like, coffee, flat coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you stayed so thin? <laughs> right? Yes. yes. <laughs> He's yes, very svelte, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, when I really faced, okay, I need to fix this. I need to stop stuttering. I want to live like this. I don't want to live um, with my speech and dictating what I do and what I eat and what I drink and I don't want my speech, I don't want this problem to be in charge of me and in charge of my life. Um, I came to that point in high school, it, it became clear to me that I was being called into kids ministry. And not just that, I was being called into large group kids ministry. I work at a very large church and I would be 
has to speak to hundreds of kids. Since in one weekend, I would speak to four, four or five hundred kids, um, and I couldn't do that while I was stuttering. I couldn't go on stage when I couldn't even say the word Jesus. I remember one of the most painful <laughs> moments. I was trying. It's to not say, funny. I don't mean no, to laugh. No. I was I having had the same problem. Yes, you know. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't yes. say Lee Lovett or Jesus. <laughs> right, right. I would. I, I don't know which was there. worse. Right. Yes. I don't know which yes. was worse. <laughs> right. I would get up there and just flog on that word, and I would have kids in the crowd think that I forgot the name of Jesus. They'll be like, "His yeah. name's Jesus." Like, I know that. Thank and, you. and then, and then, your first name was again with a J as well, which made yes. it doubly hard. Yes, yes, it made, did. made Jesus harder, and it made Josh harder. It did, and on top of all of this, I'm a huge history buff and presidential history nerd, and I can't say names like Roosevelt or Johnson or Nixon. I remember working on that with you. Yes, yes. I remember you trying to show me how to say Roosevelt. <laughs> <laughs> I got so many better ways now. <laughs> you know, you, you were unfortunately a guinea pig for me. Bless your heart. Yeah. Yeah. So um, at about this time that I was faced with the um, the realization that, okay, I, I, I really need to get help and I really need to move past this, I had just joined Audible and I looked up stuttering and saw your book, listened to just part of it and thought, wait a second, if this man narrating this book stuttered, then he has ways. <laughs> you know, I almost didn't, uh, almost didn't do the book audibly, not for any fear of stuttering, but really? I just thought, well, you know, I'll get someone with a better speaking voice. And the, the publisher said, oh, no, you won't. <laughs> no, no, no. And that's why I bought that, because there's other books on stuttering there, but none of them are narrated by the writers. So I'm like, well, there's no proof to me that you're not stuttering. You Josh, did, Josh didn't know, folks, that I give my book away to anyone, any PWS who asks. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I owe Josh nine ninety five or whatever it was. <laughs> I did not know that. No. Yeah. No. So I got that book. Um, the things that struck me was, um, first off, not just that you didn't stutter, but your speaking skills were very, very good. You, you spoke. You spoke from your heart and passionately. Yeah. And it hit me that, okay, I really want to speak like that. Not just do I not want to stutter. I want to be a really good speaker. Right. I don't just want to get past stuttering. I want to be an incredible public speaker. Exactly. I want to be an above, way above average public speaker. I don't want to just not stutter. I want even more than that. And this man's doing more than that. And there's one point in that book where um, you um, talk about how if you know that you stutter on certain sounds, try and say other words instead. So instead of saying um, vehicle, you might just say car. Right. So um, you said that if we want a list of words to get in touch with you, and then you gave us your email. So I reached out for that word list and not just do you give me that, but you, you um, said, hey, let's Skype, let's talk. That's right. And you, and you, and you followed up and you really helped me. Um, the biggest things that really helped me was, first off, reading out loud, because that was always a really hard point with me, especially since I'm a, a Bible preacher. I can't, um, I can't come up with other words in verses. So when I have kids with their with their um, with their books open to, they're um, they are all they're all looking down at the same words as me. I can't speak other words. I have to say what the Bible actually says. Exactly. So reading out loud was really really rough, and um, I think a a light bulb moment for me. You had told me. Instead of trying to think about the words and sounds, think about your tone and how you'll say these words. And if your mind is so busy thinking about your tone and how you'll speak these words, you're, you're not going to have room to stutter. That's right. Because your mind can't think of 
two things at once. I can just think of one thing. And if I'm so focused on tone and I'm so focused on passion and I'm so focused on pitch, I can't be focused on stuttering. I can't exactly. do one thing. Exactly. And even right now, it actually I'm takes 100% commitment to stutter. And it doesn't take that to do other things. But when you move 2 3% off stuttering, it's gone. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And, and even right now, I'm focused on my tone. I'm focused on my pitch. And I can't stutter. Exactly. exactly. When, my, when my mind's focused on those things, stuttering can't even enter my mind. Exactly. Evil cannot enter a mind already full. That's right. That's right. And, so, of course, the auto-suggestions were also a big help. And the three statements, I wrote them down here that I kept saying was, first off, I speak fluidly and clearly. I speak fluidly and clearly. I speak fluidly and clearly. And if I spoke that just over myself and over my own mind, that was a big help, especially since I couldn't really say F-words, which for some F-words, that's okay. But for this F-word, fluidly, fluidly, fluidly. Yeah. If I can say that word, I can say any word. Exactly. So I speak fluidly and clearly. And I'm not a stutterer because I was just labeled my, my, myself as that and said, okay, I can't do this, I can't get this drink, I can't get this food because I'm a stutterer. I can't speak on stage because I'm a stutterer. No, that's not me. I'm Josh who, yes, happens to struggle with stuttering, but that's not me. And then thirdly, I enjoy speaking. And I really, really needed that one because my my job is speaking and um, even since we since we first started to talk, that's grown so much more. And now I speak to twelve hundred kids weekly. <laughs> yeah, so it's a good thing that I fixed this. <laughs> it's a good thing that I fixed this. Um, exactly. Yeah, and um, it was it was really helpful you pointing out to me too that everybody does stutter to an extent. Presidents do. Right. Moses did. Radio hosts do. Well, you know how, how big the Bible is on forgiveness, of course. And we have yeah. to forgive ourselves most of all. Um, we certainly don't mean any harm when we make a speech mistake. But stutterers are very, are very uh, unforgiving to themselves. Yeah. And that yeah. is a major cause of stuttering, their inability to excuse their own mistakes. We have to excuse our mistakes. It is yes. essential that we, we do so. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. A third thing that I just thought of, and um, this may seem silly to those who aren't struggling this, with this or aren't fighting this battle, but on really bad days when I was stuttering on, on every single word, and you said this in much nicer words, but I just needed to shut up. <laughs> that's right that i call it now being a your own speech cop and i say to all my guys you got a badge on your hat and a badge on here and you have two guns with six silver bullets the crutches and you got to enforce the law against yourself thou shalt not stutter is the 11th official commandment for stutterers yeah yeah i mean there would be days my dad would come home from work and i'll be trying to tell him about this president that I just learned about and I and I was stuttering on every single word so I'd just be like you know just gonna back away and not talk because right now I'm just building bad memories yeah exactly I'm just reinforcing my own stuttering by stuttering if I hadn't if I hadn't uh, shut up in a number of difficult situations I would be stuttering to this day yeah yeah and at times, the best way to not stutter is to just not speak, exactly. as harsh as that may sound. And uh, anyone who's listening, you're hearing that from someone whose business is speaking. He's That's on right. the stage constantly with a mic. That's what he does for a living, and you heard it from his lips. Sometimes you mm -hmm. just take a break. That's right. About six months ago, I was asked to speak to a group of moms. It was a group of about... 150 moms and it was um, that one didn't make me nervous because I was like okay in my past I've just spoken to kids children and I've learned how to speak to kids and I've learned how to go up there and not stutter and not fear 
but these are grown-ups with phones and with social media and they could get video and post it but it was great i i i used all of these same things and i think that was one of the moments that i realized okay i'm cured i'm not stuttering i'm on stage in front of grown-ups <laughs> Fabulous. Can I ask you to tell us, can you quantify for us um, how much time you spent reading aloud, how much time you spent on auto-suggestions, and what you did to learn the crutches? Those three things, could you touch on that? Summer of 2016, when you and I first started talking, um, I would spend about 45 minutes reading out loud every day, and I would probably spend about 30, 30 minutes on auto-suggestions. And when did you do those usually? I would read out loud in the morning, and I would do the auto suggestions during my lunch break. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I've you accomplished also, a great and, um, deal with, with with we are heavier with our homework now than yeah. you than you. I mean, we're really we're really brutal with some people. Which but, is good. Which is good because if you don't consistently do these things, you're not going to get cured. Exactly. Exactly. And how did you learn the crutches? What did you do to do that? Um really I just had to keep reinforcing those in my mind. So, first off, staying quiet. Secondly, getting rid of the first sounds of words. If I'm trying to talk about President Roosevelt and I I know that I'm going to stutter on Roosevelt I'm going to say President Roosevelt. <laughs> Nobody See, I didn't even know then you dropped the R, and you did drop it, but I didn't catch yes. it. I know yes. you did, but I didn't catch it. So right. you're really good yeah. at it. You're really good at it. Did you ever use the crutches when you were, like, uh, when you didn't need to use them just to practice them? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. I would drop first letters. I would add words in front. I would challenge my myself to use differing words so instead of saying bible say god's word or say get out your b-i-b-l-e's yeah well let's see since since you basically uh from the summer of 2016 through the end of that year um we by the end of the year you had stopped stuttering and we, then we formed uh, Speech Anxiety Anonymous the following, um, say, March around there, and you joined us in that. And um, so it really it's been all of all of 2017 and um, what we've got of 2018 since That's right. you posted your success story, uh, or since you stopped stuttering, and you posted yeah. your success story as soon as it was available to do. And right. so since then, how have, you, how have you prevented yourself from having relapses? So I still read out loud. Um, one thing that I've added, um, I listen to an incredible amount of audiobooks, probably one or two weekly, just while I drive. I don't play, I don't play music. I play, I play audiobooks. And one thing that I've liked about those is audiobooks normally have really good narrators and really good speakers. So I will speak with them or speak after them. Oh, good for you. So as they speak, I'll speak too and speak the book out loud with them. Good. good. And that's helped me. That's helped me learn how to speak passionately. That's taught me how to be engaging. and That's taught me how to just say words too. And when I'm by myself in my car speaking those words, I'm never stuttering. You once told me that um, in your worst times, you you stuttered. You, you thought you thought about speech almost every minute of every hour of every day. Can, yeah. can can you can you tell us how much time you think about your speech or stuttering now? Significantly less, and and when I do, it's in a positive way. It's me trying to speak more more. Um, or with passion, it's, it's me trying to use You're more really words. You're thinking more about speaking well than you are right. about avoiding a st 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 right. stutter or a block. That's right. Yes, and when I do stutter, which is very very rare now, yeah, I just I just brushed it off as everybody stutters, 
and forget it uh-huh. and keep right on going. And everybody right. else forgets it and keeps on going. Would you tell us the story about when you when you went you hadn't seen one of your classmates in several years and uh, who had grown up with you and who had heard you stutter on so many countless words over the years and you went to lunch with him? Could you tell us what happened in that situation? Yes, there's a good friend of mine. His name's David. I've known him about ten years now, and um, I hadn't seen him for about a year. Um, and this was when I was chatting with you and reading your book and reading out loud and all of those things. Um, and I met up with him for lunch. And about halfway through our meal, he stops and looks at me and says, Josh, you haven't stuttered. You're not stuttered. <laughs> and I was like, well, let me tell you. And I told him about Lee Lovett. <laughs> I love it, though, that it took him 30. I didn't say t- Lee Lovett. <laughs> I, I love it that it took him a half an hour to even notice that yes, his old is. mate who stuttered on every word in school hadn't stuttered on one word at lunch. Right. It took him 30 yeah. minutes to say, wait a minute, where's Josh's stutter? I love that story. It's That's I've told that story to dozens and dozens of people. It's just gone. And I mean, now when I tell people that I have stuttered, they're shocked, even those close to me. Even those who have gotten close to me over the past couple of years, um, when I bring up that I've struggled with stuttering in the past, they're shocked. I think one one thing that I would, I'll take the liberty of paraphrasing something you said and put my own spin on it a little bit. One way to avoid a relapse is to continue to work to improve your speech, just generally speaking, to make That's yourself right. a better speaker. And some of the PWS I have now have characterized the crutches as voices and ways of enlivening their speech. We use extreme pronunciation to drive home an important point. Of course, we use passion. Since you came and left our program of rehabilitation, of which was a long time ago, we added a crutch called Smile Number Twelve. We simply hey. we had one guy who said, "Listen, I found when I smile, the whole problem almost goes away. If I can keep a smile on my mug the whole time I'm talking, he said, I have very little problem with stuttering. He realized yeah. this, and it's yeah. it's true. I try yeah. it myself. The minute I st- it takes a lot of muscles to smile. I want to say, listen, if I can smile the whole time I'm talking to Josh." I am not going to have a problem with my speech, as simple as it point. sounds. That's a great point. It it really yeah. is. So so using the using the crutches to and using the passion one, of course, and using modulation. Sometimes a whisper is such an effective way to speak. I used to use it in public speaking all the time, and then I'd come back to my regular voice, go loud with a point, and maybe drop into my soft voice like this. I have one PWS who gives talks to his staff every day on Skype, and he generally does it in his half voice. And they love it. He started on every word. He doesn't anymore. He does it in his half voice. And they say, way to go, mate. I love the way you're giving these talks. It's so easy and soft. No pressure. So voice modulation, whispering. Soft voice, regular voice, loud voice. We move around. That's and we, right. we breathe interest into our speech. Maybe we use a gesture once in a while. We certainly move our head around, move our bodies a little bit. Ministers, of course, often take the mic and walk around the stage. They're not the only ones. A lot of people do this. Um, mm-hmm. Movement is can be good. So in any event, what I'm saying is, Keeping, t- working on making yourself a better speaker, you're distancing yourself all the time from a speech problem right. farther and farther yeah. and farther apart. Yeah. So anyway, that said, I know you have to go. I know you have other important meetings. But uh, I'm going to sign off this program. Will you just hold on for just a minute? I just want to yeah. say one or two things after I sign off this program. Absolutely. So I'm going to say to all our readers um, uh, on behalf of or, or anyone who's listening on behalf of you and myself, I want to thank Josh for his time today, for sharing his story with us. What a fascinating story. And he proves, he has proved, and he's proving every day that if you can say one word anywhere, anytime, you can, in fact, say 
any word, anywhere, anytime. On that happy note, I'll leave you and say, see you in the next session. Take care.